There is a word from the Lord before I get started. I'm just so excited not only to be here, but just excited that our own pastor and family is able to just get away sometimes. Would you clap your hands for Pastor David Jacques, Lady Karen, the entire Jacques family. Have fun, enjoy yourself, whatever y'all doing, just, just relax. Because next to accepting Christ in your life or rejecting him, next to getting married and next to raising children, pastoring is the toughest thing on the planet. And uh, if I could do it all over again, I've been doing this for 28 years in the pastoral ministry. If I can do it all over again, I would take more time off. And so y'all pray for our pastor. Today I want to talk to you about the who, the what, and the how of prayer. I'm subtitling this, The Theology of Prayer. And as my dad would say when he would preach, do I have a praying church in here this, this morning? So here's the thing. Who can pray? And I know we're on holiday mode and it's exciting to see people in the sanctuary. There are probably some watching from the beach, from their home, from the lakeside or wherever you are. But thank you for taking this time just to get poured into and to fellowship with the believers. And I promise you I'm not going to be long. I'll definitely make sure I'm done by 2 o'clock in Jesus' name. Because we are on holiday mode and um, uh, I, can, I can smell the grills now that's fired up and the pools that will be jumped in to today. Who can pray? Prayer is for those who love God and for those who intend to follow him. Who can pray? Proverbs 15, 8 and 29. The Lord hates, hates the sacrifice that the wicked person offers, but he is pleased with an honest person's prayer. The Lord does not listen to the wicked, but he hears the prayers of those who do right. Oh, this ain't going to be a shouting message today. This is giving us some instructions on who can pray. It's not that God doesn't listen because I've had a whole lot of people in my life talk to me and especially when I'm around kids and stuff and they may be talking but I may not be listening but it's uh, in, in, in that moment but something about when one of my children who I know their voice say daddy and because of the relationship, it gets my attention and I'll hear what they're saying more than anyone else who is not my child. And God is saying, I love to hear from the honest person, that person who intends to follow me after they pray. You know why pray? if you're not intending to follow the Lord after you pray. You're not intending to live right after you pray. So who can pray? There's another place that says, who can enter into the presence of God, but he that has clean hands and a pure heart in other words, when you recognize the holiness of God and who he is, it will cause you to make sure that your heart is in a particular place with him so that you can spend time with him because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Edwin Lewis Cole said, prayer brings intimacy with whom you pray, for whom you pray, 
and with whom you pray to. Prayer is communicating with God so that you can develop intimacy with him. Intimacy. Into me, see. Oh, y'all ain't getting it. You want God to be into you? Pray. And, and, and based on what Ever Lewis Cole said, prayer brings intimacy with. I can tell you this. If, if, if you're married, if you're raising children, or whatever relationships you're in, if it's not going well, I'm, I can pretty much guarantee you ain't praying with that person. You want to break some walls down, start praying with. You want intimacy with a particular person, pray with them. And if they're not around for you to pray with them, pray for them. You're giving me, if you're giving problems and troubles that's in your life or in your marriage, my question is, when was the last time you prayed for your spouse? I'm talking about really pray for them. I ain't talking about hollering at them and cussing at them and talking down to them. Praying for them. You got issues with your children? When was the last time you really just interceded for your daughter, your son, your children? You want to draw close, you want them to draw close to you, pray for them, pray with them. The last thing Edward Lewis Cole said, if you want intimacy with God, pray to him. When you pray to him, that does something to God. So I want to give you, a pastor has done an amazing job to talk about prayer over these past few weeks, and I just wanted to add my little piece to it. Y'all all right? Pastor D said, I believe it was last week in his prayer, incense is the symbol of prayer that rises to the nostrils of God. Prayer, and then Psalm 141, 1 and 2 says, Lord, I call to you, come quickly, listen to me when I call to you. Let my prayer be like incense placed before you. Let my praise be like the evening sacrifice. And here it is, as your prayer, since your prayer is like incense, as you pray, when you light something, incense rises. And since your prayer is like incense, when you pray, it's like your prayer rises and it typifies your heart and mind now being in the presence of God in holy places. So when you're praying, you're not just saying something. Your incense, the prayer of your incense or the incense of your prayer is rising up to God and now though you're physically on the earth spiritually as Paul said you sit with him in heavenly places you're in the presence of God and let me tell you something beloved that is the one area in your life that the enemy was go is going to fight you the most oh we can sing he'll, he'll mind you up here singing he don't mind you up here playing all this good music. He don't mind me preaching. But what he don't mind is me praying. I heard one brother say prayer is firing the winning shot. If you really want to do damage to the kingdom of darkness, start praying. You want to start bringing heaven in your home, start praying. Uh, where, where are the mothers from yesterday that would take this uh, five gallon thing of oil it seems and start putting oil in shoes and on pillowcases and, and listen and you can come to my house at any given time and you would think we was in Egypt because there would be a cross on the right side of the door a cross on the left side of the door crosses all over the place mama just started anointing everything and everybody Mama having trouble in school. Come on over here. Let me just pray and I'm anoint you. Why is my shoes a little slick? It's some oil inside of that shoe. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The enemy's going to fight you more than anything. Let me tell you something. The scripture tells us that the word of God is good and true and 
We must read and study it, but it don't tell us to do that all the time. Scripture don't tell us to sing all the time. The scripture don't tell us to play music all the time. But what it does say is pray without ceasing. Jesus said men should always pray and not faint. Anytime you say you're going to come to prayer meeting, watch for the distractions because they come in. Or watch the tiredness. Oh, I'm sleepy. I'm going to wait till all the children go to bed and then I'm going to read my Bible and, and I'm going to pray. And then, Father, in the name of the Lord. And, and maybe your schedule won't allow it, but that's why my favorite time to spend with the Lord it's in the morning when my energy is at its height. Getting up early in the morning and taking my pad and my Bible out in the backyard and just get some sun. You know, there's a few reasons why I get some sun because it's vitamin D. And um, I was told that none of, no homeless people ever got COVID. And you know where a lot of homeless people spend their time? In the sun. And where do we spend most of our time? Inside. That little nugget didn't cost y'all nothing. Spend some time in the sun. Y'all ain't catch it. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't caught it as they say it in the country place. Spend some time in the sun. Spend some time in the sun. Yeah, I know it's the S-U-N, but spend some time in the S-O-N. Spend some time with Jesus. Spend some time with the master. Let me tell you, I'm a, a business owner. I have employees and I have a family. I have grandchildren. I got so much responsibility from one thing to the next. And half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. But in the presence of God. God will give you strategies. God will tell you how to minister to your employees. God will tell you how to minister to the people in your life. God will tell you what to preach and minister, how to sing and worship. He'll tell you what you need to do to get your marriage on track. He'll tell you what to do to get your children on track. If you spend time with the master, people who are currently dealing with issues in their life, Guaranteed. They ain't spending a whole lot of time with the Lord in private. And can I tell you something? Your best times with God is never in a public setting. You know, I did something starting this message that I just normally don't. Which is the greatest, the most awesome, the most beautiful, the most supportive person in this world is the most loveliest lady in the land. My wife, April, who's sitting on the front over there. Sweetheart, I honor you. I bless you. May the Lord keep you. But I'm so glad she's a praying woman. Sometimes I walk in the house and I'm looking for her. I'm like, Man, where's my wife? And I just be looking, and there's this one room, the door closed. And all of a sudden, I hear somebody crying out to God and praying for me, praying for our children, praying for our grandchildren, praying for our businesses, just praying, just praying. I'm so grateful for that. Because if we weren't praying people, why are we calling ourselves Christians? You won't change in your life. Strategies without prayer is just a transaction. Oh, 
But if you got a strategy with prayer, now you're talking about transformation. You're talking about changing atmospheres. You're talking about changing hearts. You're talking about changing situations. Why? Because you are spending time with the God, with God, so that your prayer can rise as incense to be in the presence of the of God. Prayer puts you in the presence of God, and Satan don't want you in the presence of God because in the presence of God there is fullness of joy. So one of the things that the enemy don't want you to have is it's joy. Amen. Because if you got joy, you got a different swag and vibe going on. Because joy is constant. It's not based on what's happening. Right? I don't want happiness. Because happiness is what's happening. If the pandemic is doing stuff, I, I ain't so happy. Well, if I got money, I, I'm happy. I want joy. So that no matter what happens, I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. But how do we come in his presence? The scripture gives us the, the, the key. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. Don't get it twisted now. Prayer is communicating with God. So there is a song that is also a prayer. When you, when we, when we read the Psalms and read David's prayers, he's actually singing those. We just go to Psalm 51. Oh, the Bible says, create in me, O Lord God, a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within. When I get the glory, I just, I just David, I know everybody wants your attention. But uh, there is two Psalms that I know there is some music to. I want you to tell, what is the composition behind Psalm 23 and Psalm 51? Give me the music behind it. I want the backstory. We say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall. What did it sound like? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because he leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul and lead me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. I don't know what it sounds like. I make my own song up. Can I tell you something? Back to not in the public. You see me and my wife. I don't want to embarrass her. But I can tell you that our best times together ain't when none of y'all around. <laughs> it's when we by ourselves. They don't know nothing about that. Come on, sis. But, 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 watch this. Wow, wow. Is, is that godly? Yes, because God gave us the pattern with the tabernacle. There was the outer court where there's a whole bunch of people say can come in, outer court, amen, in the sanctuary. This is outer court stuff. Oh, my God, but out of the people, there was only a select few called the priests that could step over into the holy place. Oh, you might be in the holy place, but you ain't in the presence of God yet. Out of the priests, only one person could step over into the presence of God. And what God is telling us, he says, listen, the more people you shed, the closer you can get to me. Only one person in the presence of God gets intimate with God. He was the high priest and now we have a high priest. His name is Jesus. And when he died, the veil was rent in the temple. 
because now we have access to him. And that's why I say my best times with God has always been when I was alone with him, when I got intimate with him. I'm so far behind on my notes. Let me just try to get through this. Incense is the symbol of prayer that rises to the nostrils of God. Watch this, 2 Chronicles 7, 1 and 2. When Solomon finished praying, fire came down from the sky. When Solomon finished praying, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down. It burned up the, the burnt offering and the sacrifices. The Lord's glory filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the Lord's glory was in it. So when the temple was erected, God says, y'all need a fire. I'm going to start it. I'm going to send the fire. But I'm not going to maintain the fire. Because in Leviticus 6, 12, and 13, it says the priest had to maintain it and not let the fire ever go out. Oh, the fire must be kept burning. It can't go out. It must not go out. So here's the thing. Whose responsibility is it to keep the fire going? Maybe the class ain't started yet. Who? responsibility is it to maintain the fire it's ours even on the day of Pentecost the spirit of God came like a and on their tongue was like what fire Holy Ghost said I'm going to start it but y'all got to maintain it well how are we going to maintain it cleanse yourself from all filthiness of your flesh Keep your flesh down. Stop dealing with let your flesh rule the day. Walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If you stay full. Uh, let me keep going. You got to maintain it. So how to pray? Let me keep going. So I gave you the who. God is looking for people who will get in his presence and after they pray, they intend on following him. God ain't into the, Lord, I, just, I need you to give me, uh, give me strength and give me the words to say and then write a song about how you can do whatever with a woman. Or how you can thug out. God ain't listening to those prayers. He's only listening to those who are honest. I ain't talking about perfect, but honest. And then after they pray, they intend to live right. But if we fall sometimes, we can get up. Because a righteous man may fall seven times, but we can get up still. So Jesus said, when you pray, Matthew 6 five, uh, and 6, he didn't say if you pray. Notice Jesus say, if you pray, he said when? Because the Lord assumes those who follow him are going to pray. When you pray, you should go into your room and close the door. Then pray, then pray to your father who cannot be seen. Your father can see what is done in secret. He will reward you. That's that intimacy I was telling you about. And when you pray, don't be like the mother people who don't know God. They continue saying things that mean nothing. They think that God will hear them because of the many things they say. But don't be like them. Your father knows the things you need before you ask him. So when you pray, here it is, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, we pray that your name will always be kept holy. And I know most people, when we, we, we read this prayer, it's, it's in the King James Version. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. When Jesus taught them to pray, he was given, in my opinion, the theology of prayer. How to pray. Number one, when you say our father, that means you're in relationship with him. That means you're a son or a daughter. 
That means you look to God as your protector, your provider, your progenitor, the one who began the work in you. That, that, that's, that, so when he says, our father, when you pray, how do we pray, Jesus? Pray like this, say first our father, which means you got to be in relationship with him. Second thing, he says in heaven. That means you recognize his authority, his rulership, his rank in your life, that he's above all of it. Are y'all with me? Number three, hallowed be your name, meaning you recognize his holiness. That God is in a league of his own. He is set apart. When I pray, I recognize there ain't nobody else I need but God. I know there is another denomination where they pray to Mary. But Mary can't hear nobody prayer. You tell them I said it. Only God can hear prayers. The Bible says there is one mediator between God and man. And it is the man Jesus Christ. He didn't say and his mama. And I done lost all of my Catholic friends. While you saying your Hail Marys and all that, I'm just saying, Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. While you just going through your little beads, I just want to call on the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I done got in trouble. Let me go. Your kingdom come, your will be done, meaning centrality. That means God is essential, important. Your kingdom, it's all about you, God. Your will be done. Can I tell you something? One of the things prayer would do, but this might sound a little controversial. Prayer don't always change things. But, B-U-T, it will always change you. So if my thing don't change and I'm, my heart is somewhere over here, here's the will of God, what prayer would do is cause my heart and mind to get in alignment and to get in agreement with God. Lord, it may not have happened the way I wanted it to, but God, I agree with you because how can two walk together except they be in agreement? God, I wanted you to heal my mama. But you called her home. Lord, I agree. I hurt. I cried tears at least a few times a week wanting to hear my mother's voice. But for us to live is Christ. To die is which was better for my mom for her to stay here with us or for her to hope go be with her Lord. So I want what's best for mom. Lord, I agree. See, that's what prayer, prayer gets you there. Because when you don't pray, I, just don't, I ain't praying no more because I done prayed and my mama died and my daddy died and my dog died and the fish died the other day. Everybody just dying around me. I ain't just, just I, don't, I ain't praying no more. I pray, then I trust God for his will to be done. Even Jesus. I, I, Father, find a way to get me out of this. Nevertheless, not my will. On earth as it is in heaven, that means I'm in agreement with you, God. Let me move on. Give us this day our daily bread, meaning you have to have a level of neediness. God, I know I know how to do my job well, but God, if you don't give me strength, because there are some problems you're going to have at your job that your edumacation don't, know, don't give you the wisdom to, ha for, to, to, to handle. If you raise a child or children, there are some things them crazy knuckleheads will do. And there ain't no manual. 
Oh, wait a minute. They did this. Let me just go to, what page is that? How do you respond when the child says or does this? Oh. But when you pray, God will talk to you. I need you, God. David said, this poor man cried and he heard me. And delivered me. David, you got it all. You got riches. You got, you the king. Yeah, but I'm a poor man because without Christ, I, I'm nothing. Without God, I'm nothing. Give us, forgive us our debts. That means be forgiven. Receive the forgiveness from God. I'm going to say this, and you may not agree, but this is where I stand today. I've heard people say, well, you know, what you got to do, the reason why you're going through what you're going through, you have to forgive yourself. There's nowhere in Scripture that tells you to forgive yourself. You didn't offend you. You offended God. So what do you ask? Lord, forgive me. And res if I have to forgive myself, I am telling God his forgiveness is not good enough. Lord, I know you forgave me on the cross. I know you forgave me on the cross. And you said it is finished, but that ain't good enough. I need to forgive myself. Just receive forgiveness. And then the next point. As we also have forgiven our debtors. So you want to be forgiven? Make sure you forgive. I'm going to tell you why many of us can't experience the presence of God. Because you ain't forgiven the person who hurt you. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Then he said, lead us not into temptation. That means help me to live righteous. Righteousness. Righteousness. And deliver us from evil, meaning deliverance. That's the theology of prayer. And when Jesus prayed that, King James said, For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Everybody say, What's next? Amen. Now I'm about to close. I got to close because I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass the time. Nate, forgive me. I'm sorry. Amen. Well, I just felt the Marvin Winans come over me. Let the church sit. Let me go back. Jeez, watch this though. I'm going to tell you why amen is not just some simple word. Amen means Jesus. Jesus is the amen. What does it say? Jesus is the man. It says, I am the one. I'm sorry, Revelation 3.14. It says, this is what you must write to the angel of the church of Laodicea. I am the one called Amen. Jesus said, I am the one called amen. I am the faithful and true witness and the source of God's creation. Listen to what I say. Wait a minute. Jesus, you are the amen? So when, you just, when you're saying amen, you're not just saying something. What you're saying is truth. I agree with that. The word amen means confirm. It means agreement. It means so be it. It means I intend to be faithful over what I've heard. I intend, you know what amen means? I intend to comply and apply what I've read or heard. Don't say amen if you don't plan on following. That's what amen means. And then finally, out of all those things that I just went through that Jesus taught in our Father's prayer, he only reiterated one point. He ended it in verse 13 of Matthew 6. But guess what? He reiterated. It was like Jesus said, now I know I just taught y'all how to pray, but I need to emphasize this one point. And it is in the 14th and the 15th verse of Matthew 6. It says, yes, if you forgive others for the things they do wrong, then... Wait, 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 let me go back. If you forgive others for the things they do wrong, then, y'all ain't getting it. If you forgive others for the things they do wrong, then your Father in heaven will also forgive you 
for the things you do wrong. But, B-U-T, but, if you don't forgive the wrongs of others, then your Father in heaven will not forgive the wrong things you do. So you know what I tell people? I just, I just, can't, I just can't forgive them because I, I just can't forgive because you just don't know what they did. Okay, then from this point on, I need you to live perfect. I need you to not make not one mistake or commit a sin because the only way, right, for you to be forgiven, you must offer forgiveness. I'm done, y'all. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Mm -hmm. I can't get no help from the musicians. Let the church say amen. Now don't say amen if you don't intend to walk out here and follow God. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church. And the old preachers would say, let the church say. I'm closing with this trivia. This is going to mess you up. This is my last point, and it's a trivia. All y'all who have the YouVersion Bible app, you can, you, can, you can back me up on it or find it yourself. Here it is. Why is the ending of Matthew 6, 13, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, not in most translations other than the King James Version? NIV doesn't have it. ESV, NLT, CSB. All the other translations don't have, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. There is an answer, and I will answer it on Faith Talk on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. on the Kingdom Church's Facebook page. I'm going to lead off. I'm going to answer that. Because when you go through and read Matthew 6, 13, why does it stop with... Um, what is it? Um, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into but deliver us from evil. And in most translations, stop. There is a great answer to that. And you must, you must join us on Faith Talk at 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. I will lead off with that. That's your trivia. This is the theology of prayer. I pray that all of you were blessed by it. Listen. Guarantee, when we walk out of here, guarantee, the kingdom of darkness will do everything they can to fight you from praying. You want change in your marriage, your home, your children, your business? Pray. Every Monday, I get my team together, the chaplains, and we have a devotion, and then we pray. Because I need them to go serve our clients well, but not without prayer. Our leaders need prayer. This church needs prayer. But most importantly, right where you are in your home, you need to pray. Prayer will change the atmosphere. So, Father, I pray that every home that's represented not only in this place, but even virtually online, I pray and over every member that is covered by this church, that you strengthen them, that they would embrace the need, the power, the spirit of prayer 
and that we would pray without ceasing. That we would pray in season, out of season. That we would pray healing in our families. Pray healing over our marriages. Pray healing over raising our children. Pray healing over our businesses and the companies we work in or work for or lead. Pray that we would pray that we would pray and that we would pray and when we're finished praying that we would pray some more because having done all to stand help us to stand therefore with our loins girt about with truth the breastplate of righteousness the shield of faith our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace with the sword of the Spirit in our hand, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. For those who don't know you, God, I'm, I pray that you impact their hearts that they would know you. Bless our pastor, Pastor David Escha, wife, Lady Karen, children, Cover them, keep them, bless them, strengthen them. We pray for our campus pastors. Pastor Mike, plus Pastor David P. Cover them, keep them, strengthen them. All of our associate pastors that serve in any capacity, bless them, keep them. All the leaders of this church, all the servants of this church, bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name. Now, believers, God told Aaron, you have the congregation around you. Pray this over them. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and grant you his peace. And then Paul comes along in the New Testament and says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus the love of the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with all of you now and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. For those of you who don't know the Lord and want to be able to authentically call him Father, and become a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Please, we want to talk to you. We want to minister to you. And I'm going to ask you to text the name Jesus. Just simply, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Text Jesus. Take your phones out in the text box. Text the name Jesus. The 407-449-8. 884 and be expecting someone to get in touch with you to minister to you we want to pray as the old folks used to say we want to pray you on through in Jesus name and may God you go with the body as we celebrate this memorial day and for those of you who have who have served raise your hand if you've ever served in the military if you served in the military, if you're online, send us a, a hand emoji or something. Let us know if you've served. And if you know someone, Memorial Day is all about memorializing not just those who served, but those who either died in the theater of war or they're no longer with us. And we want to memorialize them. So for those of you who've served, those of you who have family members that are no longer with us who have served, may God bless you, strengthen you, comfort you, and we say thank you for all the men and women who have served in the armed forces so that we can do what we're doing today, and that is to worship God in the beauty of holiness. Thank you. Thank you. And I pray safety over everyone in Jesus' name. God, for those who go to the beach, those who have pools, God, we come against drownings and accidents and all those things, God, that you will protect your people.
bless us oh God strengthen us surround us with your peace your presence your power and God that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us in Jesus name stand to your feet and let the church let the church say amen let the church say amen